Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting festive furry friend <laughs> and I'm gonna be sipping on a little spike seltzer uh, if you do enjoy this painting I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks so let's get painting and let's get sipping all right so what I'm going to be using for materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas if you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using I'm going to be using acrylic paint today my colors are titanium white cobalt blue burnt umber which I'll call brown fire red deep yellow green oxide and Mars black and of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to as well but that's what I'll be using for my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number nine round brush, and I have a number two round brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting along with me, you will probably wanna, ha whoops, wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do have a couple of additional resources for you that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the pencil and the fancy palette I use and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are gonna be sketching ourselves a outline for our landscape. So I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm just gonna guide you with a couple of markers and then we'll connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a hill and a little road and we'll be ready to paint our base coat on here. So how I'm gonna do this is on the right hand side at the top, I'm gonna to come down about two inches and make myself a mark. Then on the top left hand corner, I'm gonna come down about three to four inches and make myself a mark. I'm gonna connect these two marks with a rolling hill kind of sketch, something like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you just make it whatever you'd like to make it for your rolling hills. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from this hill, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make another mark. Then you come down maybe about a third of an inch or a half of an inch, make yourself another mark. Then you're gonna come down to about here. This is a little bit below your halfway point of your canvas, so I would say this is about where my halfway point is. I'm just a little bit below that. I'm gonna make myself another mark. Then I'm gonna make a mark between here and the bottom of my canvas, almost about halfway between these two, maybe a little shy of the halfway point. So I have four marks on the left-hand side. Before I do anything with these, I'm gonna to go to my right-hand side, make a couple more marks. So if this is about my halfway point in my canvas, I'm gonna come up, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna come about, let's see, I would say a little bit higher than this mark over on the right hand side. So however high you have this one, kind of travel over, 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 and then just go up a little bit and make yourself another mark. Just so these two marks aren't exactly the same. Then you'll go about halfway between these two and come in about an inch, inch and a half. So we have three marks on this side and we have four marks on this side. We're gonna draw a road now. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this top one to this one with an arcing kind of motion. Something like this. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be 
straight. It can have a little bit of an arc, a little bit of a wave, it doesn't matter. Then I'm gonna do the, um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom two markers. I'm gonna connect these two. Something, I'm gonna bring this maybe down a little bit and then maybe something like this. And then I'm gonna connect one, two, and three. So this is gonna be a long, oval kind of mark. And the less perfect it is, the more natural it's gonna look. So if I have just like a little bit of a wave or something in through here, and then I'm gonna bring it around here, something like this, then maybe I'll bring it down here, and then up like that. So I've got my road really far away, it's gonna be nice and slender, and then as it comes around here towards the foreground, it'll get larger. And that is all we're gonna do for our outline. When you're all set with this, you can put your pencil down. We're gonna use our large brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large brush, and I'm gonna be using brown, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have all three colors on my brush at the same time at the top of my sky. And then as I come down towards the horizon, I will stop picking up the blue and the brown and I just pick up white paint. And what will happen is my sky will naturally get lighter and lighter as it comes down. So I'm gonna put all three colors on my brush at the same time, kind of equal parts of each. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to overload your brush. You just want enough on there so you can control it. And then I'm gonna start up at the top. I'm gonna to be using a left to right kind of long crisscrossy brush stroke. And once I've started it up there, I may never have to pick up the blue and the brown again, only if I feel I need to add it. So I just picked up white without washing my brush. And what's gonna happen is my sky will get lighter and lighter as it comes down towards that horizon. I think I wanna add just a touch more brown to get it a little bit more neutral. There we go. I like, I like my neutral colors, so <laughs> I just added a little bit of brown just to make that happen. So again, right now I'm just picking up some white. I'm going right down to that horizon line, and I am going to end up hitting my pencil mark, which is okay. You can paint right into it. We're going to be painting those hills anyways, and we're going to want to be painting over that line anyway, so this is just going to get me all the way and get good coverage down towards those hills. And you can see my sky just looks like a gentle kind of gradient from a little bit darker at the top to a little bit lighter down at the bottom. And if you don't, uh, aren't able to accomplish that gradient right off the bat, you could certainly do a second layer if you wanted to. Um, but that's all I'm gonna do for my sky. I am gonna be using the same brush for the next step, but I'm gonna wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our land. So everything except for your road. So there's back hills, this patch of land, and down here. I'm gonna be using my large brush. We didn't really need to wash it. I didn't mean to make you wash it, but we're gonna use the same colors that we used in the last step, which are brown, blue, and white. And I'm really just going for an under coat to my snow so I want it to be kind of dark on the darker side so when I do put my snow on later and add this, these dimensional elements of the snow I'm able to easily create a lot of shadows and dimension in my ground. So I'm going to arbitrarily pick up those three colors brown blue and white I'm going to start with all three colors and then every time I go to pick up paint I'm just going to pick up blue one time brown one time white another time and you'll see how I'm going to do this I'm going to apply my paint with a circular motion so I'm picking up brown blue and white you can really start wherever you want to I'm just going to start up in through here just so I can kind of get this into motion and this line that you drew in through here it's okay if you hide it right now, no big deal. That we're gonna, we're gonna get that to reappear when we add the snow later. I just picked up white paint on my brush right now just to kind of get this up in through here. And you wanna be able to visual, visually see your line where your hills meet your um, sky so that way you don't lose your own horizon line in through there. So whether you make it lighter or darker, that's totally up to you. I think I might make mine a little bit darker just so I can have a clear visual as to where those hills are. And what I'm trying not to do is 
overblend these hills. So I'm not really sitting in one area and scrubbing, scrubbing, or, or brushing it a thousand times. I'm really just kind of getting the paint on there and moving away. And I do want it to kind of look like it all belongs together, but I don't need to sit and paint it a thousand times and get it to be all the same color. So I just reloaded with some brown without washing my brush. I'm reloading with some blue without washing my brush. I'm reloading with some white without washing my brush. You probably get the picture at this point. And then I'm just gonna kind of color this all, this whole area in with this circular motion, bringing it right to my, my pencil mark. And again, I'm going for various tones in my undercoat of my snow. So if I see some light spots and, or some dark spots, that's awesome. That's gonna only add to the illusion when I go to put the, um, the texture on the snow in a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of using the circular motion, making sure that these colors look like they belong together and they're not too distinct of sections, but I am definitely having fun with the intensity of them, making them pretty, pretty darn dark as far as snow goes. Um, and then I just got this one little section down here that I'm gonna start with my muddled brush. I got some brown there, I got some blue here, just kind of adding it on in these messy kind of circles, picking up some white now just to kind of get it to fill in the, fill in the gaps a little bit for me. So I guess I put it on kind of on the heavier side initially, and then once I've got um, some good areas with a, a good amount of paint on there, then I just start picking up a little bit of white and then just kind of manipulating it, rolling my brush around in this circular motion to get them to look like they belong together, using more the tip of my brush as opposed to the side of my brush. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly executed at this point. This is just gonna be our base coat. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your snow on here, you can wash and dry this large brush. Get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am painting my road. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are brown, black, and white. So I don't want this to be just a solid color. So I'm gonna start with some brown paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just kind of dusting this brown on here, all about my road. It's okay if you hit your snow a little bit. I'm gonna go around the bend, my little hairpin corner that I've got set up for my nice red truck to go around. So you can see I'm not using a lot of paint. I didn't paint it in 100%. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint, not a lot, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just kind of dusting it on here. I'm not overpowering it. I'm not making it too, too black. I just wanna kind of get a nice little thin layer on here. So just a little bit more black is going on my brush right now. And this way I've got a couple of different um, shades of this dark, dirty road color. You might picture yours to be a country like dirt road or maybe yours is gonna be pavement. You can really imagine it to be whatever you would like it to be. And then once I've got this brown and black on here, then I'm gonna hit it with a touch of white. And then the white is just gonna make it more into a softer looking kind of wintry road. Maybe there's a little bit of snow dust along the road in, in various spots. And you can see I'm not really getting it too perfect around the edges because we've got the, the snow that's gonna be lining the edges of the road and stuff. Just put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush without washing it. And now I'm just gonna kind of get this to look a little bit softer. I'm almost kind of just dusting it on top of the road. If you want there to look like, like, like there's a hill, you can put a little bit of a curve in that brush stroke, especially when you start using the white paint. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a curve in through there, like there's a little bit of a, of a hill or a dip down in through there. And then as I come 
up the road on this side. This area I know is going to be covered by my, my cute little dog anyway, so I'm not terribly concerned about that area. But then as I go up in through here, and if you want it to be a little bit more grayer, I just put a touch more um, black on my brush just to get a little bit more grayer tone in there. You can certainly do the same. And then once you've got your road all nice and done, we are going to be using this large brush again for the next step. Just want to finish this one little area of my road. I think I want my road to look like it's kind of going up a little bit in through here. I'm going to dip it down a little bit more here. You can, it's so funny because you can change the direction of your road by just a couple of simple little, little strategic lines. So I just kind of made mine look like it was kind of going down the hill a little bit. And then again, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your road on here, you can wash and dry that big brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we are putting our snow on the land. Later we'll put snow piles around the edges, but right now we're just going to worry about um, designating the areas of the land. It's all going to have snow on it, but this is going to start that dimensional element to it. So I do want to forewarn you that you want to have your canvas dry before you start this step. So you can either, you know, take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can sit here and blow on it, which might take you longer than you want it to. <laughs> or you can just take out a blow dryer and just blow dry it. Maybe yours is already dry by now, but if it's not, I do recommend you finding a way to get it dry. And then we're going to use our large brush for the next step, and we're going to use white paint only. So how I like to do this is I'm going to tell myself where I want the snow to be the brightest, I'm going to put the paint kind of heavy there and then with the remnants on my brush I just rub it out and it it becomes translucent the less paint that I am using on a particular section. So I'm going to be doing all of the land areas and I'm going to start up at the top so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm going to want the top of my hills to be the brightest and maybe right by the road edge. And remember, we'll be putting snow piles on later. So if it doesn't look awesome right around the edge of the um, road, don't worry about it. We'll make it look awesome later. So I'm going to put some white paint on my brush. I'm going to start up at the top of this hill and just kind of designate where I want that kind of heavier snow to go right now. And then I'll, I still have a good amount of white paint on my brush, so I'm going to do the same thing here. This is where that separating line that you had um, put earlier would have been if you can still see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush with the remnants and I'm just going to rub it like dry brush it into the rest of the area. The less paint you have, the darker it's going to be or the more you'll be able to see through it and it gives it a really nice natural look. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more on this edge over here so I just put a touch more white on my brush and then I'm gonna take those remnants and just kind of rub it out. And this also helps to soften that first layer that we did. So it kind of brings it all together, makes the, the snow look nice and uniform. And if you wanted to have more, more hills or more piles, you certainly could do that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this and also just kind of bring it right towards um, the edge of the road. So I'm just kind of taking my brush and almost rubbing just a little bit more of the white towards that edge of the road. Start. It's it, This will be the start of my snow banks, but it also allows it to look like there's um, a nice edge to, to that road. So just kind of something like this along the edge of my road and then getting it to blend out a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing in through here. So my lightest or whitest areas are going to be along the edge of the road and maybe somewhere in through here. And again, we're going to put snow piles on later. So when this doesn't look super awesome right now, don't worry about it. So I'm just kind of bringing this towards the edge of my road, getting that, that little edge to, to look like it belongs. And now that I've got my lightest areas, 
Now all I'm gonna do with that remnants on my brush, I think I actually need a little more. I've, I've used all of the remnants on my brush. So I'm gonna just kind of take this and rub it into the remaining area of that section. And you can see how it's just giving it a really nice soft look. And if you feel like you need to reload what I'm doing, which was a little off camera there, is I'm taking a touch of my white on my brush and in order for me to eliminate big clumps, I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel. And this is gonna allow me to give it that dry brush, soft kind of look. And again, you could have this as light or as dark as you want it. It will show up in a higher intensity when we put those snow piles on, but this is looking pretty good to me, making it look like there's little high spots and low spots throughout there. And then in this bottom area, I'm gonna have an area where my dog is gonna be sitting. So I'm gonna just kind of give myself a couple of markers. He's gonna be sitting, this is gonna be like a pathway here. So I want my brightest areas to be maybe along that pathway. So I think I'm gonna have something like that, and maybe uh, something like that. I'm gonna have a little bit of brightness up in through here. And again, snow piles are coming later. So don't worry about it not being perfect right now. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub this in towards the entire area. And same thing over here. This is where the edge of my snow is gonna go. So just kind of rubbing that in there. And then just dry brushing it throughout the rest of the area. I'm gonna dry brush this center section too because that's a little bit too dark for me. And I do want it to feel like there's some, you know, softness, softness to it. So I'm, again, just gonna take very little bit of that white paint and just kind of dry brush it on here. Maybe a little bit more because that didn't seem like it was enough for me. So something like this. And then we are going to be using our, mm, let's use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your dry brushed snow on here, you can take, put the large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer, or the first step to our super cute red truck. So I'm gonna be using my small brush I'm gonna be using red and black paint. So how we're gonna start this is we're just gonna start it with a kind of a, a crooked rectangle. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use red paint only. So I want my truck to look like it's in this vicinity and it's kind of going downhill a little bit. So I am going to come in from the edge of my canvas, maybe two or three inches, and I want this to be a little bit above wherever my road meets my land. Cause I want you to kind of see underneath the rear end of the truck to give it the illusion that it's going downhill. So I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a dot right in through there. Then I'm gonna come up about an inch and just a little bit into the right, make myself another dot and you can connect these two. So it's a slightly diagonal line up in that top left. So then I'm gonna come in from here, maybe about four and a half to five inches to the right. And this for me is gonna be in my road just a little bit. So I made another red dot in my road. So now it's gonna look like it's going downhill. So then I'm gonna make another dot about the same height as this one, about an inch up. So maybe somewhere I would say about I, don't, I want to make sure it's even, so I'm going to use this as a measuring tool. Somewhere about here is good. And then I'm going to connect these two. Now all I need to do is connect the top to the top and the bottom to the bottom. So something like this. Like that. And then we're going to connect the bottom two. I have a uh, shaky hand, so you may detect that I rest my hand on my canvas to stabilize myself. That is one of my biggest tools to having straighter lines is to make sure that my hand is stabilized as I'm making them. And then I'm just gonna color in this section red. So once you've got your rectangle that is a little bit at an angle, 
You can just color it in with red paint. And then what we're gonna do once we've got this colored in with red paint is we're going to make the, um, the cab for, for the truck. So my cab is gonna be, if this is about halfway, I'm gonna put it just a little bit to the left of the halfway mark. So maybe something like this, and I'm gonna put my vertical line at a similar angle to the back of the truck. So just a little bit slightly angled like this. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come up almost halfway between here and, and here. So maybe somewhere in this vicinity. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna make this line a little bit shorter than that line. This one was about an inch tall. So this one's a little bit shorter. And then when I go to connect them, I'm gonna go at this same angle for a little while and then I'm gonna curve that front edge of it. So something like this, and then you just curve that front edge of it. And then I'm gonna close this off a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this door up a little bit in through here, like that. I'm gonna make my window a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna bring these lines in just a little bit, keeping that curve in the front. So something like that. And then I'm gonna put the front of the truck on here. So I'm gonna go at about the same height as my door jam here. And then when I get to the front, I'm gonna curve it. So something like this and then just give it a little, a little curve on the nose like that, and then just color that in. If you want, you can put a little front bumper on it. So I'm gonna put just a little, a little front bumper in through there, and then I'm gonna wash my brush real quick. I'm just kind of cleaning up the, ed the bottom here. Wash my brush real quick and dry it on my paper towel, and then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black, and I'm gonna put my tires on. So I've got, a little bit of black paint on my brush. And if you run through wet red paint, it's okay, the black will overpower the red. So don't worry if your red isn't totally dry. I'm gonna put the back wheel is gonna be, it's gotta be between your door and the back of the bed of the truck. So I'm gonna put it maybe somewhere in through here. And of course it's gotta, it's gotta hit the ground too. So you don't want it suspended in the air too much. And it's not big. The, the bigger the tire is, the smaller the truck's gonna look and vice versa. The smaller the tire, the bigger the truck. So you can really um, determine how large or small you want these tires to be. So I'm gonna put one there and then I'm gonna put one in this front area as well. So something like this. And I wanna make sure that they're kind of similar in size and this front one can be um, down the road just a little bit more if you wanted it to be. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna make a couple of strategic little um, accent lines or contour lines throughout the truck with black paint. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit um, of a hub, I don't know if it's a hub cap or a wheel, wheel well kind of line. So, um, but I don't want it to go too far. So I'm gonna kind of separate the bed from the front of the truck. And these are really loose, sketchy lines. I'm not doing really tight lines. So I have black paint on my brush right now. So I'm just gonna do a loose, sketchy line there. I'm gonna do my, now that I've got that separated, I'll do the same thing in the, um, kind of in the front. I'm gonna put one down the center of this door, something like that, maybe. So that way I know when I go to do the wheel well, I don't go over too far. And I'm just really kind of making a loose, sketchy, curved line over the tire, something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing in the front, something like that. Maybe a little jam kind of line to separate the front from the door. Then maybe I'll do the same thing down this back door, something like this, a little, a little contour or separating line give it a little separating where the door would open at the top, then maybe a little bit of a line in through here. Let's see, what else? Oh, maybe a little where the light will go in the front, maybe a little 
line underneath where you would step up onto the truck, something like this. And then this is gonna be hidden by your tree and the front, and then we're gonna do all kinds of little cute highlights and stuff. So I think that's all I'm gonna do right now on my truck. We are gonna be switching to our medium brush for the next step. So once you have your first layer of your truck on, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first coat on our dog. So I'm gonna have mine pretty big because it's sitting right really close to us. So mine's gonna be really tall and I'm doing kind of, I'm gonna say like a golden retriever lab kind of dog. Um, I'm gonna use my medium brush, but you can do whatever kind of dog you want and whatever kind of color that you want. I'm gonna show you a basic construction of a dog sitting, looking away. So you can modify it with whatever colors, the shape of ears that you want, the height, the width, whatever you'd like to do, feel free to modify it in your own special way. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna pre-mix myself a base coat for my fur, which will be darker than the main coat that I put on later. So let's say you have a white dog, you wanna do like a gray base for the the fur if conversely though if you have a black dog you definitely want a black base for a black dog but any varying shade of brown or to white you want to go a little bit darker on that base coat so i'm going to have mine brown like a golden kind of brown but i'm going to do a dark goldeny brown as my base color so i'm going to take my regular brown and i'm actually going to add yellow red and a little bit of white to it. And I'm just gonna spin it around until I get the shade that I want. I think I'm gonna use some more yellow in mine. And of course, you can really just kind of tweak yours until you get it into whatever shade that you want. But I am gonna make it pretty darn dark to begin with. And then once I've got my desired color, I'm almost there, I will add, I, I already did, but I will, add as much white as I need to, because I don't want this to be totally see-through, and the white will help the opacity of it and make it so it's not so see-through. So I'm pretty close to where I want to be. I'm going to add just a little bit more white to it, and then once I've got my desired color, now I'm going to go ahead and start building the shape of my doggy. So I am going to be, when I build these, I immediately kind of think there's three parts. There's the, the main torso part, there's a head, and then there's the rear end part. So I want my dog about this tall, and the rear end is gonna be about down to here. So I'm going to kind of build it from the bottom up. So I'm gonna have the, the rear end of my, of my dog somewhere kind of in through here. The rear end would um, kind of pop out a little bit more and it might not even be the rear end. It might be the back legs that you're seeing at the bottom of the dog. Then the dog's got um, the, the main torso part. So think kind of snowman, but with a long kind of more slender torso. And then I've got my head. And most dogs don't have a really long neck. So you kind of want to have that head really almost kind of sitting on the, the shoulder area. But again, look at your own dog if you want to, or you know, take a picture from behind of your dog to get a pretty similar shape. And then once I've got that shape in there, I do need some ears and a tail. So first I'm just gonna kind of color this in to make sure that I've got the shape that I want. I think I've got just a little bit thicker over here. There we go. And I know that the paint that I'm using is going to be a little bit see-through. So that's why I'm going to build this in layers. So I've got my my dark coat that I'm doing right now. This is going to give me kind of like a primer kind of coat. And then once I've got this on here, I will add 
the shapes for my ears and my tail. So I'm just going ahead getting this full coat on here. I'm not doing any special brush stroke, just kind of getting it on here. My tail, I'm going to have coming out the center somewhere in through here. And I want this kind of laying, it's going to be a pretty big tail. I think I'm going to have mine. My sister has a Labrador retriever whose tail is so powerful. <laughs> so I'm kind of m making this into her dog's tail. It's a really, it's, it doesn't have a super lot of length to it, but it's a really powerful tail. So we're going for, for Thea's tail here. And it knocks over a lot of stuff and it really hurts when it get when it when she's happy. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. And then I'm going to have a couple of fun, cute ears. So I'm going to have this one is going to be maybe um, maybe just kind of flopping down a little bit and then I think I'm gonna have this one maybe almost poking up a little bit so you can certainly have fun with your your ears too if you if you have a dog that's got different you know ears that go in different directions feel free to put yours into whatever way you want and then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so once you have your dog shape on here with the main coat you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the Christmas tree on the back of the truck. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using green and black paint. So I want this to look really fun, like the tree is way too big for the truck and we're gonna be holding it down with a big string. You can have a little dainty one if you want. You can have one standing up in the back of the tree. Feel free to make this however you want it to be. But I'm gonna be using black and green paint and I'm gonna just alternate the colors as I go. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a marker or a tree trunk on my tree so I kinda of know where I want um, the, the placement to be. So mine's going to be sticking out the back of my truck. It, I'm going to have it tied down up here so it's going to be almost like pulled down at the tip and I want it really big. So I'm going to put maybe the tip of my tree maybe about halfway up my, my the hood of my car and then I'm going to come back and where would my tree trunk be so I would say my tree trunk would be, I'd have to stick in the truck, right? In order so it really didn't fall out. So we're gonna make the tree trunk go in the truck, right in that corner. It doesn't really look like physically it would work, <laughs> but we're gonna go for it anyways. So now that I've got, know that that's the tip and this is the end, I want it to be kind of like a pine tree. So it's gonna be really narrow at the beginning and then really fluffy and big at the end. So. All the while, I'm going to be going from the trunk and I'm going to make these little um, flip out kind of brush strokes. So I'm going to just kind of flip it out like this from the trunk and I'm going to make the, it wider as it gets down towards the end of the tree. And I also know that we're going to be putting a whole bunch of snow on the tree later. So this is really just kind of setting everything into motion. I'm gonna have it kind of sticking out the end of the truck a little bit in through here. But I do know that if this was standing up, I'd want this to be really full here because it would be wider at the bottom of the tree. And this is in essence the bottom of the tree. So I'm just gonna kind of keep flipping that out until I feel like it's, it's good enough. And then it's gonna be just all stuck in and kind of leaning against the inside of the bed of the truck. So you can almost just kind of color this in with black paint to start and then just do little green accents on top of it because it's gonna be shadowed in here anyways. You're not really gonna see any little peekaboo spots until you until you crest the, the top of the truck. So right now I'm just kind of putting my little, my little pine needle branches on up here. And then as I get towards the top of the truck, that's when they're gonna start to just get squished and they're gonna lean against the truck. I'm starting to pick up a, a lot of green right now just to kind of get some evident little pine needle things. And you can hit, have them overlapping the edge of the truck a little bit, that would look super cool. And if you can't detect the green 100% because we are using black also, 
don't worry about it because when we go to put the um, the snow on later, that's going to help to add the dimension to it as well. And you can keep going on this and put as many little pine needles as you want, but we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you get this done, wash and dry. The I'm using medium now, but we'll use the small brush for the next step and you can just get right in. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are finishing our little truck details. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of little tiny details here. I'm gonna be doing it with my small brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, white, red, yellow, and some of my dog color. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna just kind of start from the bottom and work my way up. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath my truck with a touch of black paint on my brush so I know that the shadow is going to be where the um, kind of where the tires are. You can use black with a little bit of water on your brush if you want to. Just something that's going to ground the truck. I've got my light source is just high up in the sky so you can certainly put as much of a shadow underneath here as you want to. I just want it to look nice and natural here and then I'm going to put some bolts in my tires so I'm using black and white and I'm just making some little polka dots in the middle of my tires with black and white on my brush at the same time so just little polka dots in the center of my tires and I'm going to do a little highlight of my tire something like that just kind of give it a little bit of shape so just a little light kind of circle around it and then I'm gonna uh, wash and dry my little brush and I'm going to be putting I'm gonna do my little person who's driving I said I was gonna work from the bottom up but I guess I'm not I'm gonna go down I'm gonna do my person next so I'm gonna have my little person wearing a Santa's hat so I'm gonna put red on my brush and I'm just gonna make like the top of a little fun wintry Santa's hat, something like that. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a little white fluffy edge to it. So just some little white dots to the edge of it, a little white pom-pom on the end. If you wanna be able to see it, but like you can't see mine cause my edge is so um, dark or light. I just put a little bit of black behind it. So that way it puffs out a little bit. I gotta put a little face on him or her. So I'm going to just use the color of my dog. <laughs> you could certainly use whatever color you want. You could lighten it up or darken it or whatever you want. I think I'm going to take the um, color of my dog and just add a little bit of white to it or yellow and white or something. And I'm just putting a little essence of a face in through here. I'm not doing anything fancy, just a little mark with something that resembles skin color and it could be any color you want and then I'm putting a little bit of black paint I washed and dried my brush it's gonna have a big winter sweater a little turtleneck or something on something like this and then I need to do a steering wheel so I'm just gonna put a little mark like this and a little steering wheel something like that I'm gonna hide the bottom of the steering wheel so that way I don't need to put a hand on there. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do for my person. I'm going to wash and dry my little brush. And now I'm going to be using red, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. I have all three colors on my brush at the same time. This is going to be for my highlights. So I want highlights everywhere that I think the truck is like popping out a little bit. So on my wheel wells, I'll have it on the top of my truck. I'll have a little light in the front. Maybe I'll have a little highlight on this part. Maybe some little accent highlights on the door. So anywhere where you feel like you want to add a little bit of dimension to it, you can add these lighter areas. So I'm doing a little bit of highlights in through here. Every time I reload my brush, I'm going yellow, white, and red. And the reason why I'm using yellow in, in with my highlight color is because if I was just to use red and white, which my brain tells me is the lighter color of red, that would make pink. And I don't want a whole bunch of pink on my truck, so I'm using yellow 
to counteract the pink that would um, be created if I was just to use red and white. And then I'm just adding little uh, highlighted accents. If I need a second layer of paint, like I feel like I need to finish that a little bit, I just added some more red to my brush. And really yet red, yellow, and white are the three colors that I'm just kind of alternating on my brush right now in order to get these highlighted areas. And I also want some kind of light in the front or the appearance of a light. So I'm gonna put a little light in through there, maybe some yellow and red behind it just to give it a little bit of a glow, maybe some more yellow. And you just play with this until you've got it the way that you want. Ooh, maybe I'll put a little glow on the outside of it like that. And maybe a little, I'm just picking up a little bit of black and red right now to give the a little shadow behind it. Yeah, that's looking cute. And then let's see, we're gonna use our, um, let's use our, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all your little truck details, oh, we have one little truck detail left to go. I forgot about it. The little rope for our um, tree. We can't forget to tie down our tree. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of black paint on my brush and get this little rope. It's gonna come somewhere in through here. It's gonna go underneath my lit, my truck cover like that and then somewhere up like that. There we go. All right, medium brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second coat to our dog fur. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm using my original dog color plus black and yellow and white. So how I'm gonna do this, most of it is just gonna be a second coat of the same color, but I wanna to start to add my shadows and my highlights. So I'm going to be taking my original color and adding a little bit of black to it for some shadow areas on the right side. And I'm gonna conversely add a little yellow and white to the highlighted side of that color, which is gonna be my left. So for me, my light source is way up in the air and it's a little bit to the left of my dog. So I'm gonna have my highlight primarily on the left side and the shadow is on the right side. But it's really high up, so we're not gonna have long shadows on the ground. So I'm gonna take my original dog color and I'm going to separate a little bit of it and I'm gonna add a touch of black to it. That's gonna become my shadow color of my fur. So I'm taking that adding a little bit of black. Now I have a darker version and it's my shadow color for my, for my dog. Then I'm gonna take some of that color, I'm gonna separate it out, and I'm gonna make myself my lighter version, which is gonna be with yellow and white. So I'm getting a lighter version. I don't just wanna use white because for me the white will, if it was just white, it might muddle it a little bit and make it too soft. So I want this to stay true to the maybe golden retriever kind of color. So I'm adding um, a little bit of yellow to it. And if you wanted it more orangey, you could certainly add yellow and red to it. That's gonna help to make it more of that, you know, even truer like golden kind of color. But wherever your, your comfort zone is with that color is totally fine. And once you have your darker and your lighter versions, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, I'm gonna wash my brush so I, I'm gonna start with my darker color. And I'm going to put not a lot of it, but enough over where I want my darker version to be, which is gonna be over on the right hand side and underneath. I need some on the side of my tail, which is my tail is gonna come up into the body a little bit. I need some underneath my tail. So I've got my darker version on my brush right now. And then once I've got my areas, kind of where I want them to be shadowy, I want a little bit of shadow underneath the ear. I can have a little bit of shadow um, coming into the body as well. And I can also have some shadow underneath 
this left ear even though you know my highlight is over here I can still have a little bit of shadow underneath this ear because it is folded over so wherever you feel like it would make sense I think I would have a little bit of shadow underneath this this side of the bum too a little bit so something like that once you've got your darker areas in there then what I'm doing is I'm just going to pick up my original fur color and get that shadowed area to blend in with the um, with the main section of the of the fur and if your first layer isn't totally dry yet don't worry about it because we have a fluffy layer that is going to be the the final layer that we put on which will definitely make it so it's no longer see-through anywhere um, but right now I'm just making sure I have a nice second coat coming over towards that um, what's going to be the highlighted side. I can see I have a spot right here that it, the, my bottom layer was still wet so it's lifted right off of my canvas which is totally okay because we're going to have that fluffy layer that we that we add in a little bit. So I'm getting my shadow to blend in with the main section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of that lighter version. So my lighter version is going to be over here on the left hand side. It's going to be on the left hand side of the face and I'm pulling it into and around the head a little bit. It, does, it, it doesn't just have to be at the edge. I'm going to have some on the top, maybe some over here, maybe a little touch of it over on the top of this ear over here. Definitely some on the tip of the tail. So something like this, maybe even a little bit right in through here. Definitely some in through here. And then once I've got that highlight area, I start to do the same thing that I did with the shadow, which is just blend it into the regular color, the main section of the color or the medium tone of the, of the um, fur color. So I've got this going on here and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow and your highlight and your second coat on that fur, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our little Christmas tree over here. I'm using my medium brush. I'm just gonna put a little snow on it. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. I'm not gonna use a lot. I just want it to look like they just picked it from the tree farm and it still has a little bit of snow on it. It hasn't all shaken off yet. So I've got just a little bit of white and I'm just gonna add these little tiny specks of white onto some of my um, some of my pine branches. And of course, you could get this to be as snowy as you want. You could have a bunch of snow still sitting on these. Whatever, wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. And then we're gonna switch back to our large brush after this step. So once you've got your, your snow on your, on your tree, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing snow piles and their shadows. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna use white paint, but I will also use maybe a little brown, a little blue, and maybe a touch of black as like a shadow on the road. But I'm gonna start with white paint so I can just kind of put the snow piles where I want them to be. So I wanna maintain perspective in the painting, so I want my snow piles to be short or small the farther away they go and then as they come closer to me they'll get bigger and taller so i've got a little bit of uh, white paint on my brush i know that i want some little snow piles along the edge in through here maybe a little bit along the road over in through here and you can see i'm really not doing much i'm almost just kind of tapping the little corner of my brush we got a little bit in through here. Maybe they start to get a little bit bigger in through here and they can cross over into the road when they're on our side of the road. So you can, they can go above the road, which means that they're, you know, higher than the road in essence, if that makes sense. It makes sense in my little head. <laughs> and then you can just kind of blend it out as much as you see fit going on the, on the opposing side. 
I'm gonna have a couple of little ones over in through here, something like this. And again, as I'm far away, I'm really not making them very big, just kind of these little essence of snow banks. And I got some all around this corner in through here, something like this. And then I can just kind of blend it out into the actual snow main area itself. And then this is where it starts to get much larger as it comes around the bend and we're starting to get close to the dog because it's got to be, you know, relative to the size of the dog. So I'm just kind of taking my brush and kind of just tapping it here and there. If you hit your road a little bit, don't worry. I'll show you how we're going to make a little bit of a shadow in through there. And your snow piles can be tall. They can be small, whatever you want them to be. I um, am very familiar with really, really tall snow piles <laughs> where I live. We, we get lots of snow. So we have very big snow piles. Um, I'm going to have some snow piled up on the pathway in through here too. So I'm just kind of really brightening up the snow along the edge where I want that where I want it to appear as if it's been piled up so something along this line I'm going to have some in through here I can have it just kind of almost going a little bit out into there just do as you feel it it looks natural so I know that there's going to be a big huge pile in through here and these are going to be nice and big piles in through here. And again, I can cross it over into that road if I want to. I'm going to put a little shadow behind them in a second here. I just kind of want to get them on here first so we can have some direction to go in. i got little piles in through here. So now that I've designated where I want my snow piles to be, maybe this one gets even bigger because this one is the closest to us. So now that I've designated where they go, I want to give them a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to pick up a touch of brown and a teeny tiny bit of blue. I did not wash my brush. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of dirt into my snow piles so they look a little bit more natural. So again, I'm not really doing much to it at this point, just kind of dabbing in a little bit of blue and brown and making sure it doesn't look like I've just, you know, dotted that darkness in there. If you feel like you've gone too much, pick up a little bit of white and just kind of intermingle that along with it as well. And then I am going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I want to put a little bit of a shadow behind or on the correct side of the, um, of the snowbank. So for me, if my sun is that way, they're going to be on this side over here. So just a tiny bit of blue and brown, very tiny, tiny bit on my brush. And you can almost just dry brush these little tiny shadows in there. Maybe I've got a little bit in through here. And if you want it darker, you can certainly add a teeny bit of black to your brush where, again, this is one of those whatever your comfort zone is for the, um, the intensity of these type of um, details. Of course, I got to do it so you can at least see it. So I had to put some more paint on my brush so you can actually see it. So something like this is going to give me a little bit of a shadow there little bit of a shadow in through here and again if you feel like you've gone too far you can always put some snow back on top of it so something like that i think my shadow would be somewhere over here on here i'm actually going to pick up a touch of black for the road shadow so teeny tiny bit of black on my brush is going to give me a little shadow on that road and you can do it up top too. I'm going to do it on this side of the road. I'm going to come over here and do a little bit of a shadow. And then I'll go ahead and put a little bit of a shadow up and through here. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your snow piles and their shadows all nice and created, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding a ribbon around the dog's neck 
You could certainly add a collar. You could make this whatever color that you want, but I am just gonna kind of keep mine on the festive side and I'm gonna make a red, messy ribbon as if, you know, maybe he tried to take it off once or twice and it's not in the best working order. <laughs> so I'm gonna use, um, I'm using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using red, probably some brown, black and white as well. So I am picking up some red and a little bit of brown just kind of as my base coat to get this on here. I want it kind of on the thicker side. I don't want it to look like it's like choking them. So I'm gonna bump it out a little bit on the side and I'm gonna make it almost like the size of, like of a scarf maybe. Um, so feel free to make yours as wide as you want. I'm giving it a little bit of curve, which is gonna tell the viewer that the, the neck has some shape to it. So I'm just going ahead and putting a little bit over here. I have a little spot of brown on my brush over here, so that was cool. It gave it a natural kind of gradient over there. And then I'm gonna just pick up some more of my red and maybe a little brown on my brush at the same time. I like using these multiple colors at the same time on my brush, especially on something like this, because it will easily give me some dimension and these highlights and shadows naturally without me really having to work too hard at it. And then maybe I'll put a little bow, the other part of the bow down here, and I'm gonna put a little string coming out there, and then maybe a little string coming over here. And then I need a little button in the middle, so a little circle. Now I need to give it a little bit of dimension. Without washing my brush, I just picked up a little bit of black. So I'm gonna add a little shadow underneath it, something like that. I'm gonna add a little shadow on the right side because my light source is up to the left a little bit. So maybe bottom over here, maybe inside here has a little shadow. A little shadow there, little shadow here, little shadow there. Uh-oh, I'm gonna make up my own song in my head. <laughs> you guys don't want me to make up a song in my head. <laughs> they don't come out very good and they'll get stuck in your head for weeks. So we'll just leave that alone. Um, so I've got my shape on there with a little bit of shadows. I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and red. I don't care if this goes pink on me, so if you don't want it to go pink, you can certainly use a little yellow like we did in the truck, but I'm really okay with this going a little pink on me. So I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight over here and just kind of pull it into my scarf, something like that. I'm gonna add some on maybe this little tip over here Add a little bit on my little knot part the, where the where the ribbon comes together, something like that. And you can just really have fun with adding these little bits of highlights. I think I want it a little bit brighter over here. Add it a little bit more white and just pull it in through here. And then we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this cool ribbon on here, you can Put your medium brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the final layer on our fur. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using whatever colors I had made originally for my dog. So I had a a, like a chestnut kind of color, then I had my dark brown, and then I had a, like a little shade lighter. I'm gonna utilize those colors and just make them a little lighter as my fluffy layer of fur on the outside. So I can take my big brush and I can take that original like chestnut color and I'm gonna add a little white and yellow to it. So that's gonna be my light additive to these colors. I don't necessarily just wanna add white, because sometimes when you just add white, it might make it, especially with these brownish colors, it might make them a little on the pink side. So if that happens to you, just add a little bit of yellow into it. So I did that. I took my, my chestnutty color and I added a little yellow and white to it. When I do this layer of fur, my brain tells me, don't use a lot of paint on your brush. I'm gonna be using just the little tip 
of this bristle brush because it has nice firm bristles I'm going to be able to get these almost individual looking pieces of fur I know that the dog that I'm trying to emulate doesn't have long fur but your dog might have long fur so you can still use the same thought process and put like little curly cues and little directional pieces of fur to make it look like your particular dog so have fun with it I'm going to be making a really bright part up on the top left of these ears on the top of the head I'm going to brighten up my um, highlighted areas with lighter fur um, and I go kind of quick as I do this you'll see my my brush just starts kind of dabbing and, and dashing and, and going along the way but as I develop it really what I'm doing is just putting a light fluffy layer of fur on here with very little bit of paint if you scoop up a whole bit bunch of paint and you go to paint on it your your hand and your mind will tell you keep blending keep blending and it will all turn into one color so just add just a tiny bit of paint on the tip of your brush start slow work your way into a rhythm that that is comfortable for you so I've got my lighter tone I'm just picking up a teeny tiny bit on my brush and I'm just gonna start kind of adding it into my um, onto my fur so you'll see right as I just start adding these little bits of fur on here it all of a sudden it so quickly just gains a lot of dimension so you can utilize white as well just whatever light version is visually appealing for you and again I'm just using the the tip of my brush getting a nice light coat of fur on here getting a little tip over here and if you feel like when you get to these smaller areas you want to use a smaller brush feel free to do so and I'm trying to keep the contour of the body so if I feel like this area over here like his shoulder is puffing out more or this little part of the leg is poofing out a little bit more I'll get that a little bit lighter I've got the, the tail I, I haven't picked up more paint for a little while because I'm just use, u, utilizing the remnants that are on my brush I want this tip to be really nice and bright so I'm just kind of adding those those light flecks of the of the lighter color I know that that would bump out a little bit I'm gonna go into my original color with a little bit of this lighter color so I can add the fur on the back too so again I want to add a second layer all over the body and I wanted this to be more of like a golden dog as opposed to a chocolate lab or something like that so that's why I am utilizing this lighter tone as as the top layer of the fur but it might be shadowed underneath underneath the ribbon I don't want to take away all of my shadow over here so maybe I utilize my mid-tone as the little fur over on the shadowed side so you can really have fun with this just make it as textured as you want again if you have a dog that has longer fur you could certainly start pulling out some little curls along the edge or making these longer brush strokes um, as you're going through and adding these little pieces of fur and I don't try and do them straight down that's another key that I probably should have told you I'm not going straight up and down I am always using a little bit of a curve in my in my brush stroke so this way it tells the viewer that these pieces of fur are kind of coming out of the animal as opposed to just laying flat on top and then I'm going to continue to get these um, the bright side as bright as I want it I might have to keep adding a little bit more lightness to it just to get it into that brightness that I want and then once I've got it as hairy or as furry as I want what I'm gonna do is I do need to put a tiny little shadow underneath the bum so it doesn't look like he's just you know two-dimensional down here and I'm gonna do that on this step because I only need a teeny tiny bit of paint on my brush just like I'm doing for this fur so because it's the same kind of process I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on the same step and again if you want you you know just kinda add these bits wherever you need them to be I'm just kind of continuing to add a little bit of paint to my brush 
The head looks a little flat back here, so I'm just adding a little bit of volume with this directional brush stroke. And if you feel like you've gone too far and it's, it's not looking furry or it's all one color, go back to the beginning with making it dark over here and then just building your way to the lightness. That looks cute. This, I'm not digging the top of the head, so I'm gonna just kind of bring back a little bit of my darker tones just to kind of utilize that and just see if I can get a little bit of fur on top of here. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to just wash my brush really quick. I don't need to wash it 100%. I just want to get a little bit of shadow underneath the bum. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of brown and black on my brush. Itty bitty 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 itty tiny tiny. <laughs> I can't stress enough. Tiny bit of paint. You can always add more. You can't take off. It's very difficult to take off. And again, my light source is really high in the sky. So I don't need this shadow to go very far. But I do want something underneath here so it looks like you know, he his form is casting a little bit of a shadow. I keep calling it a he. I'm not quite sure why. I have I didn't know what gender this dog was going to be. <laughs> he's not even really meant to emulate any dog I really know. He's just a cute little Labrador or something or retriever of some kind. And then I'm going to put a little bit under the tail. Just again, I want this to look like there's a little bit of, you know, dimension here that he's not just flat and if you want the tail to look like it's sticking up a little bit just pull the shadow this way just flat on the ground so then it'll look like the tail is up a little bit and i i think that i think that does it he looks so damn cute to me oh i just kind of swore i didn't mean to do that um so we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to go with your small brush so once you've got your fur on your on your adorable little dog here you can get your small brush out and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i'm going to be using my small brush i usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right and i think i'm going to sign this one in the bottom left i'm going to use my small brush and i'm going to use black paint but you could certainly use whatever color you'd like I'm going to do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to be. Your identifying mark is totally fine by me. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really festive furry friend, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.